Um, well, not first off, the, the weather obviously has been a bit snowy today. Been able to get your full training in there and all good? Just, just, it was horrific. Um, but credit to the boys, it was a horrible day to train. But as expected, attitude was brilliant, good output, so uh, we're all very pleased. Uh, ben House? Uh, doesn't look great, but he trained today and he trained well, so pleased for him. He's, uh, he's quite a tough lad, Ben. Um, Sean Rowan and Carl Brushworth, how are they getting on? Um, both need to wait and see on both of them. Um, yeah, 50 50, I would say. Are you going to have to change how you travel down with those players I, because of the, the illness? I'm sorry, I nearly interrupted you there. Um, that's a constant, ongoing conversation to the day, so I'll always be guided by the medical guys on that. Um, don't quite have an answer for you that on, uh, on that yet. Apologies. And has it spread or is it just those two? No, just those two, thankfully. Good, that's good to hear. Um, how's um, the, the likes of, of TJ and, and Adam and Joe all getting on? Uh, Adam's in a good place. Um, Adam's been training this week, uh, worked him really hard on Tuesday, trained well again today. TJ's a little bit tricky because um, very little showed up on his MRI, so we're kind of um, I don't want to say we're, we're just a little bit unsure of how that is, so we'll we'll have a look at him over the next few days. And there's, you know, the guys are quite um, quite open about what they may or may not have to do going forward. But fingers crossed, in a few days' time, you know, he'll he'll hopefully continue progress. But there's a potential of um, some further problems down the line. And uh, and Joe's Joe's in a good place. Had us up as we discussed, successful, and just carrying on with his rehab. Um, it's been a busy period of, of fixtures. After Saturday, you do get a, a blank midweek. Is that come as a relief? Yes, I was asleep at half seven last night. So, <laughs> if I'm tired, God knows how the players feel. I mean, from a training perspective, the guys are great. They're in a really good place. Obviously, as you know, modern day football, we have specific targets to hit every day. We work quite hard and they hit them. There's no red flags from uh, match output. Numbers are quite good. But, you know, what you can't see is the mental aspect of it. And... Um, you know the pressures we put on them and the young group and living away from home a lot of them so you know being a footballer we talk about is a really privileged life which is it's incredibly taxing and um, you know we're all grateful for the opportunity we get but um, when you play or work in football because I've got to be careful what I say because it's such an amazing environment but when you when you see it yourself you know when you see what the players are put through and, and the pressures they're under with modern day society and social media and coaches and players and fans and boards it's you know it's a lot to ask a young group but uh, they're a credit to themselves so yeah i'm sure the rest the, the rest when it comes to week to week will be will be much needed and um, gary caldwell was there on on tuesday night watching your side do you think you had a true reflection of, of lincoln on, on tuesday from what you saw um good question um a couple of things we worked on which Gabby wouldn't know about I wasn't overly happy with but um, I think it's not rocket science when you watch us structured hard work and really disciplined play from a really good shape um, I think we're tactically very good out of possession the players have to take all the credit for that um, incredibly dangerous counter press and counter attacking team if anybody has an algorithm of us that's what it is um, not trying to be clever it's out there for everybody to see I can tell you everything about every team in the league through modern science and algorithms and stuff like that. So I think from those, from Gary's eyes, he will have seen that. Uh, and next to each other in the table, so it should be, you'd feel a really close game this one. Um, I think they all are. I think they all are. I mean, we, look, we, we played Peterborough earlier on and we, we got beaten 4-0 and, and well beaten on the day. But generally speaking, every game, so if you look at the top teams, some of their recent results against teams down the bottom, I know there's a couple of things that have been spanked a few times, but there's some many, many, many tight games. Um, statistically speaking, if you look at air games this year, they're all very, very tight, whether we're playing a team at the top, a team down the bottom, or a team in the middle. So, um, I'd like to think it'd be tight, because if it is, it means we've played well, and, uh, and we've performed well, because I think Exeter are a very good side. I think Gary's done really well. So, um, If it's a tight game, I think it'll, uh, it'll, it'll reflect well on us. And the fact you're up to, to 10 unbeaten, is it just the, the message now just to try and make this unbeaten run as, as long as you possibly can? Yes and no. It's, it's just not something I've thought about. It's not something I've discussed uh, with the players. Well, I haven't discussed it with the players. I haven't even discussed it with the staff. Um, we just focus on other games. I was chatting to a, a friend of mine the other day in the league and he was like, it's an incredible run you're on. I was like, really? He went, 
you're 10 unbeaten and that. And I was like, you know, because what you get in League One is generally inconsistency. And the higher you go up in the football pyramid, things become more consistent. So, look, we're really pleased with that. We're very proud of it. But it is literally just focusing on the next game. And um, I know it's boring for you, Rob, because we keep talking about it. But that's the, that's the truth about it.